Yo, what's up? So we're on to the next part of this tutorial series about how to make a VR or mobile first person shooter game. And the next thing we want to do is actually allow for free movement. So let's recap where we are. We currently can move our head if we're wearing the headset or on mobile. Uh, you could hack this to make your finger move. Uh, you click and you teleport to a, a specific object with a teleporter script. But, uh, you know, that could be quite good if you made like a, a swinging game, like Tarzan swinging on vines, uh, you know, a modern version of that. Uh, but we want to have some free movement. So to do that, we want to move this layer object based on the head movement so if the player the actual human game player if they're looking down in the vr headset we're going to make the player move forward and if they're looking um you know forward eye level or up it will stop moving so we already have a player script let's open that uh, we want to basically delete all the things we previously made in our test to do the lurping um, and then we stopped using the uh, lerp codes because we decided to go for proper um, what's it called proper teleportation instead of animation uh, what we then want to do is we want to reference the vr camera so if we look at the setup uh, what have we got here? Let's expand everything. We're, our script we're messing around with right now is the player script attached to the player empty game object. But that empty player game object is a container which holds the actual VR camera. But the way that Google Cardboard VR is set up, you want to generally do your movements to the parent of your camera. So we're in this script, but we want to give a reference to this object so we can access it. So we're going to just say public. Now instead of game object, we're going to go for transform. We probably could go for game object too, but if we go for transform, we're only because uh, we're only concerned about um, you know these transform the position the scale and the rotation um, so every game object also has that but we only really care about that stuff right now so now we're in player we can drag this VR player into there we can hit save and let's go back to our player script and then we want to as I mentioned, we're going to look down to trigger the movement. So we want to have a, a look down angle. And let's call it uh, 25 degrees for now. So, um, you know, 25F is kind of 25 degrees. Um, so that means if you're looking down 25 degrees, it will start to move. Obviously, we have to do quite a bit more code to get there. Um, a speed, so we can call public float. We can call it walking speed, but you know, just to save effort, let's just call it speed, and let's call that three f. So these are floats, so that means they can have decimal places. Uh, we want to have a boolean, so a true or false indicator to uh, tell us are we in the moving forward state so if you do public bool uh, move forward and you can just leave it like that and then we can later in the script set is it true is it false we also then need to create a character controller which we will attach to this player. You know, we haven't got one on at the moment. 
and then we will do some calculations and manipulate the character controller so yeah if you go to click anywhere here add component and it says character controller and now i think it might have some of my favorite type settings saved no it doesn't uh, so you can adjust the the height of this controller you can modify the the center position uh, you ideally don't want this character controller to go through the floor so you just do some mods based on that i think mine is slightly going through the floor um, then you can start play, playing with these arrows just to have a check and you know there's a radius you can make it a bit bigger if you want i think that would be cool for now so now if you look at the hierarchy this player has a character controller so if we go back to the code what we can now do is refer to it in the code it's just the way that we're going to we've got to do it we've got to refer to it make it and refer to it um, sometimes uh, and we've we've declared it up here as a private character controller and then we've said cc so over here you know this is like a, a variable and a type but over here then we're going to we're going to now talk to this we're going to say cc equals get component and you know we're getting the component off of this game object we're in right now the player and we're going to say character controller so um you know we know there's a character controller because we just made one so now when we say cc it's going to be referring to the character controller and we've kind of got it in a in a variable type format as well uh okay so if we go back to here our script now has it won't show the character controller information because we set that to private even if it could show it but we've got a move forward boolean so we can you know true or false we've got a speed as you guess that can be the player's moving speed we've got a look down angle we can change all of these from the uh, editor itself if we want to you know, tweak it so now we're going to go into update we won't even need to really create any custom methods we could make a method for move forward but uh, we could just do it in the up in the update um, loop a method that unity has already created so um, let's start with if a VR player so if the VR player that the child the camera um, if it's there's something built in called Euler angles and this is like rotation as a Euler angle so it's like a type of angle that we're used to um, so if the VR players angles in the X axis is greater than or equal to the look down angle uh, we'll come back to this code in a second I'll show you why we're doing the x-axis now if we get to this VR player even though we're looking up and down which normally is y that's the position when you get to the angles for some reason the y angle probably because of the way that the camera is facing does not move up and down it moves left and right so the x wait it's going on okay the x angle is the one that moves up and down in rotation because we're in the rotation um so that is why we're saying if the vr players you can just imagine, ignore the word euler so if the vr players euler angle is greater or equal to um the look down angle and the look down angle is 25 in this case we can change that later but we have to add another condition so we do double and so it means and if this next condition is also the case 
um, a true. So we're going to say, and if the VR player's unit angle dot x is less than ninety, uh, so if we look at, I haven't finished that script, so. Um, This is, when you're going down to 90 degrees, you're basically looking flat at the floor. So what we're saying is, if they're looking at something greater than 25, now we've hit 25, now it's gonna start moving all the way until you get to face flat on the floor. Um, so that's the condition that we've just set. If the VR player's um, up and down angle, X angle is, greater than the look down angle that we've created and we can set and if it's up and down angle so it's Euler dot x angle is less than 90 so less than looking at the floor then do something so what we'll just do for now is we'll just say make move forward equal true and then we can just say else with else you don't need to make a condition in these brackets because else means if the above thing ain't true, or um, well, if the if statement uh, isn't in effect, then everything else becomes else. It's not an else if. So we're just gonna say move forward equals false. So yeah, if the VR player is um, looking at a number which is your angle that you've set your look down angle or all the way up to 90 degrees so if it's not face flat then make move forward state be true it's a state um, or a concept of a state um, else if that's not the case then we're not moving forward so that means you're looking at something less than the look down angle so you could be looking at 20 20 degrees instead of 25 or you could be face flat so you don't want to be moving forward because you physically probably can't um, and then we're just going to say in here, instead of making a method, we're just going to say if moving forward is equal to, or we don't, you could say if moving forward is equal to true, or you could just say if um, move forward. So by default, once you've put the Boolean in the if statement, it means it's true. So if move forward, but let's just put some extra code in. If move forward is, is true, so double equals, so we're checking then what you do is you have to do this weird thing here okay first we're going to we're going to create a new um variable a local like vector 3 variable inside this if statement we're not going to declare it up at the top uh, and then you're going to do this weird thing where you have to um you have to convert the position off that VR camera where it's looking into a direction. Um, it's quite hard to explain. But what you do is you um, say VR player dot transform direction, it already popped up. Uh, and then you just put, um, you know, it's a vector three dot forward. So you're converting a position into a direction. It's a bit weird, but if you don't do that, then things move for a bit, then they stop moving, or they'll start moving in like negative ways. Um, and then what you do is you're going to tell the character controller, CC, okay, let's turn you're going to say character controller, uh, you're going to say access this simple move, which is built into that character controller. See, I didn't, I didn't create a simple move. It's built into this character controller moves the character with speed so if you even click into this thing it can start to show you like you know somebody else has basically made this um, um, for example unity has made it um, so anyway you go you access the simple move component class method from the character controller and then you just pass through uh, forward which is this thing here we've said you know forward is the VR players transform direction um, and then whatever we pass there and you multiply it by speed which is what we created up here so like three miles an hour for example 
Um, and it should be done. So when I look down, and let's make sure, okay, we're in the VR player. Let's try and look at this rotation. So he's on 21, ain't doing nothing. He's on 25. As soon as we go past 25, it's going to do something. Now it's going to hit the wall. And like, let me try to look right at the floor. So if I'm looking at, well, it's not letting me get past 85, but probably because of the height of my player, maybe it won't. But you see, the problem I've got is, let me just restart this thing I have to look down just I suppose I can just about look down and still see what's going on but like if there was enemies in front of me and I have to look down like that especially if I've got the VR headset on I'll probably be getting hit uh, and not being able to see who's hitting me so let's go into player and Where's the look down angle? Look down angle is 25. Let's make it 15. And what this means is if I look down even 15 degrees, we should start moving. So that's a bit better. So I can look down. At least I know I'm not looking straight on. I'm looking down a bit and then I can start moving. Okay, let me, I've ticked that box so I can open. I can even teleport to that one there. And as soon as I look down, can drop down so I can teleport there, teleport to exit, get in the right position. So this is a bit better. So like this is you know one cool way to move in VR. Yeah. Um, or you could be using your gyroscope on your phone, you know, you just tilt it down and it moves, and that way you've saved having to use buttons and interactions to do movement. So you've especially with Google Cardboard, you want to save um as much as you can um, from using or you want to save using buttons as much as you can so you'd rather shoot twice to calculate the power of a shot or to shoot different weapons rather than having to use shoot to uh, or, you know the, the click button to to move you could save that click button for jump or you could just you know you could do some cool tricks with this you could detect if the head has been you know the head the angle has been moved up and down within a certain time that could trigger a jump as well so we can get creative with this but yeah um you know there's more, only a little bit of that code is complicated um most of it makes uh makes logical sense all right and i'll see you for another video in the near future um and what have we covered off so now we have covered off we already done teleporting in the last video We've done moving and jumping. Um, can probably just skip rotations because we've done now done moving with the head. If we're doing moving using the up, down, left, right keys, uh, then rotations kind of come into a bit more. So uh, yeah, you could say I'll put rotations behind there uh, just because you know we probably don't need to cover it um, yeah I suppose the next video I'll probably make about how to shoot bullets um, how to make the bullets disappear and uh, then in future videos we'll make enemies and make the bullets kill those enemies all right see you later